In June 2014, Derek Broadus and his wife Maria purchased the six-bedroom house at 657 Boulevard, Westfield, New Jersey. Before they moved into the property, they did some renovations. One evening, Derek went out to check the mailbox, and as they had just purchased the property, there wasn't much in the mail except a few bills and a white card-shaped envelope. The envelope was addressed in thick, clunky handwriting to the new owner. When he opened the envelope, he read, Dearest new neighbour at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighbourhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched it in the 1960s, and now it is my turn. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. At first, Derek thought it was a welcoming letter, but as he continued reading, it got darker in tone. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? I see already that you have flooded 657 Boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Bad move. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. You have children. I've seen them. So far, I think there are three that I have counted. And are there more on the way? Do you think to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family, or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call them and draw them to me. Derek noticed that the envelope had no return address, but the creepy writer continued. Who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out at any of the many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. The Watcher. It was late in the evening and Derek Broadus was by himself and felt threatened by the intimidating letter. He quickly ran around the house and turned off the lights so no one could see inside. He then called the Westville Police Department, where a short time later, an officer came to the house. He read the letter and said, Who the hell's this? And asked Derek if he had any enemies. The officer then suggested he move some building equipment from the back porch in case they tried to break a window with it. Derek then raced to his wife and kids, who were fortunately still living at their old house in Westfield. Later that night, they decided to write an email to John and Andrea Woods, who were the previous owners of 657 Boulevard, and ask if they had any similar experience with the person who called themselves the Watcher, or who they might be. Andrea Woods replied the following morning, and said there were a few days before they moved out, they'd also received a letter from the Watcher. She said they also made mention of the Watcher's family observing the house over time. However, in the 23 years that they'd lived in the house, they'd never received a letter like it and had thrown it away. Later that day, both the Woods and Maria Broadus went to the police station and spoke to Detective Leonard Lugo, who suggested they not tell anyone else about the letter, especially the neighbours, who they had yet to meet and who were all now suspects. The Broadus family had not even moved into the new house, but already on high alert, where Derek cancelled the work trip and whenever Maria took the kids to the house she would constantly be looking out for their welfare. On one occasion Derek was showing some neighbours their renovations and Maria froze in fear when the woman said it would be nice to have some new blood in the neighbourhood. The following morning when one of the contractors arrived at the house he noticed that a sign that had put up the following day had been torn down overnight. Two weeks after the letter had arrived, the Flammy had still not moved in, and Maria visited the property to check out some paint samples and check the mail. When she opened the mailbox, she immediately recognised the unmistakable thick black lettering on a card-shaped envelope. On this occasion, the watcher had addressed the letter to Derek and Maria, 
and had misspelled their surname and called them Bradus instead of Broadus. Was this intentional, or did he not know their proper surname? Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard. The workers have been busy, and I've been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what is in the walls yet? In time, they will. Maria immediately called the police. Over the following weeks, the watcher bragged of how he had learned a lot about the family, especially their children. He even knew the children's birth order and their nicknames. The watcher had obviously been close enough to hear Maria calling the children by their nicknames. They went on. I am pleased to know your names now and the names of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly say their names often. They then asked about one child in particular and had obviously got close enough to see drawings on the easel on the porch. They said, Is she the artist in the family? 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all of the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic? Or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through your house. Who am I? I am the Watcher and have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too, Bradders family. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. After the letter, the couple refused to bring their children to the house and were now unsure whether they would move in. A few weeks later, a third letter arrived, and the watcher wrote, 657 Boulevard is missing you. By the end of 2014, the case had reached a dead end and there was no digital trial. The family was now totally stressed. Other than the strange letters, the police had nothing to go on and there were no fingerprints and nobody could be placed at the scene of the crime. Six months after receiving the last letter, the family had had enough and decided to sell their dream home at 657 Boulevard and the watcher's identity remained a mystery. There were many questions as to who the watcher could have been. Could there have been a bidder who was upset at losing out on the house? Andrea would suggest that the fact that they'd observed both the work being carried out and also observing their children meant it was someone in the neighbourhood. They found that the letters had been processed nearby in Kearney and the letter was postmarked June the 4th, which was before the sale was public and the previous owners had never put up a for sale sign. How did the watcher know that? The renovations were mostly internal, and the neighbours did not notice any commotion. One point of interest was when Derek and Maria Broadus showed Detective Lugo the easel that the watch had spoken about, as it had been hidden from the street by bushes, and would have been difficult to see from the street unless someone was behind the house or next door. You would presume that an obvious candidate for the watcher would have been a close neighbour. One family that came to notice was the Langford family, and the Langford house would have been positioned to observe the easel on the porch. The Langfords lived next door, where the mother, Peggy Langford, was in her 90s, and several of her adult children were all in their 60s, and they still lived with her, and the family had lived there since the 1960s. The watcher claimed that their father had also been watching 657 Boulevard, and the father, Richard Langford, had passed 12 years earlier. The watcher claimed that the father had been on the job for two decades. One of the younger members of the Langford family was Michael, who didn't work, so would have spent a lot of time at home. Detective Lugo was aware of the Langford family and said that a week after the first letter, he brought Michael Langford in to police headquarters for questioning. 
Michael denied writing the letter and they had no hard evidence to prove that he had. Because the watcher had claimed a historical attachment to 657 Boulevard and the Langfords were the only family in the street to have resided there since the 1960s, they fitted the criteria. Then another letter arrived. The house is crying from all of the pain it is going through. You have changed it and made it so fancy. You are stealing its history. It cries for the past, what used to be in the time when I roamed its halls. The 1960s were a good time for 657 Boulevard when I ran from room to room imagining the life with the rich occupants there. The house was full of life and young blood. Then it got old and so did my father, but he kept watching until the day he died. And now I watch and wait for the day when the young blood will be mine again. Detective Lugo even brought Michael Langford in for a second interview, but to no avail. By the end of 2014, the investigation came to an abrupt end, as they could find no hard evidence, as the watcher had left no digital trail and no fingerprints. It didn't help that the watcher seemed to be getting more and more unhinged. They continued. 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It is coming after me. I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend, and now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me. I will fend off its bad things and wait for it to become good again. It will not punish me. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young blood play again like I once did. Let the young blood sleep in 657 Boulevard. Stop changing it and let it alone. In the spring of 2016, they put the property back on the market where things became particularly nasty. Some people suggested that when they purchased the property, the family were in over their heads and tried to get out of the cell by making up the whole story. And it sounds like this whole watcher thing was a ploy. A family with grown children and two big dogs had agreed to rent 657 Boulevard where the renter said that he wasn't worried about the watcher though he had a clause in the lease that let him out in case of continuing letters. Two weeks later, Derek went to the property where the renter handed him an envelope that had just arrived and the letter was dated February the 13th, 2016. And it read, Violent winds and bitter cold to the violent, spiteful Derek and his wengeful wife, Maria. Turn around, idiots. Maybe you even spoke to me, one of the so-called neighbours who have no idea who the watcher could be. Or maybe you do know, and are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. The watcher had obviously been observed in the media coverage, and said, I walked by the news trucks when they took over my neighbourhood and mocked me. Derek's surreptitious investigatory efforts. I watched as you watched from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions in the attempt to tear down the house. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with his army of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers of the Boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher! The render agreed to stay if the Broadduses installed cameras around the house, yet another letter indicated revenge could come in many forms. Maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. Derek took the letter to the police where a detective traced a circle around a neighbourhood map that was 300 yards in diameter, suggesting the watcher must be somewhere in that circle and could be someone they'd never suspect. One day, sitting at the Westfield train station, Derek looked at his phone, which read, You are despised by the house, and the watcher won.